Today we're going to talk about the Kyotokugaku Pick Phantom. You can see the phantom here. We have the torso with the vessels leading up to the join into the subclavian and into the SVC. You can see the cutaways so that you can see all the vessels throughout the procedure. You also see the reservoir that will be attached to allow fluid or tinted fluid to simulate your blood to course through all the channels in order to have your uh, vessels filled with blood for drawback. You can see the portion here where the ultrasound phantom insert attaches. You can see the ridge that seats the phantom along with the articulation and the joints for the blood vessels both at the distal and the proximal end of the arm. This is what the ultrasound portion looks like. It's got the ridges on both ends and it's got the ultrasound phantom material in the middle where you can ultrasound through to see the vessels. Now on the back of the phantom is this groove that will seat on that ridge on the arm in order to seat your phantom properly. On either end are these uh, inserts to, in order to plug in the tubing from the blood vessels. This is what it looks like when it's in, been installed. The phantom is seated in the portion. You can't see through it, which is why it's going to be an ultrasound guided procedure and not really a landmark based procedure like most picks at this level of the arm. And you can see that the blood vessels tie into the inserts on either end. And this is what the arm looks like. And you see the tubing for the blood vessel travels through the arm into the insert, out of the insert, and through the articulation points in the shoulder. This is what it looks like when we're imaging it. We're using a linear array probe and you can see the vessel in a transverse plane. You can see the nice thick echogenic walls and anechoic lumen. You can also see in the deep field, the groove where the phantom sits on the arm as an analog to your humerus. You can see here in a sagittal plane, we can see those thick, nice echogenic walls of the blood vessel and anechoic lumen, along with the soft tissue density um, phantom material above it and below it. So this is how I normally do access. We're going to go with the linear ray probe. We're going to find the vessel in a short axis. We're going to rotate to a sagittal plane. And now with a sagittal view of the vessel, we're going to use an in-plane needle guidance technique as we insert the needle through the phantom material. And visualizing on the screen an ultrasound and watching the image, we advance the needle into the vessel. And once we puncture the anterior wall, we make sure we don't puncture the posterior wall. We aspirate some of the fluid or blood in here. In this case, we haven't tinted the fluid to leave it clear. So you can see it dripping from the needle, a little bit of flow back because we've charged the phantom with a little bit of pressure. On the ultrasound image, this is what it's going to look like. We start off with our transverse image of the vessel. We rotate to a sagittal plane. We have a nice view of the vessel. The phantom does retain some scarring from previous attempts. You can see the needle being advanced using in-plane guidance technique into the lumen aspirate a little bit of blood and there we go. The next step is once we have confirmed access into the vessel and cannulation we're going to advance a soft tip straight wire through the needle into the vessel. This would be a micropuncture wire so it's a much smaller wire and then normally would dilate up to a larger wire. And this is what it will look like. We'll have the needle in place with the wire through it into the vessel and you can see the wire exiting at the proximal portion of the insert into the blood vessel. And this is what it will look like. You can see that the needle is in the vessel and as we actually thread the wire, it advances smoothly into the vessel without any problems. Now, as a point, this is not what we normally do during the procedure. This is just done in a different plane for you to demonstrate how the wire glides through the vessel. And I would note that this is particularly a straight tip wire and not a J tip wire. If kits use a J-tip wire that could cause problems because the J-tip may get caught on some of the insert articulations. You can see here that we have the blood vessel leaving the insert with the articulation there coursing through the arm articulations and up into the shoulder. And you can see here we're advancing a straight tip wire through that area and you can see that it flows pretty smoothly. You can see that the wire crosses that insert there without a problem. It crosses through the articulations and to the next joint of the tubing. It then crosses into the brachiocephalic vein and in, down into the SVC analog. Now you can also note that this could go up into the IJ uh, if there's a problem. And that simulates some dysfunction or ability to correct some of these problems later on in the, fa in the phantom. Now, once the wire is in, and this is being shown with the micropuncture wire, I will usually image the wire 
in a transverse to sagittal plane just to confirm the wire is in the correct vessel without puncture of the posterior wall because this is sort of the point of no return. Once you confirm the wire in place, you see the wire going through the anterior wall, layering against the back wall, it's now safe to dilate and upscale. And at this point, with the wire in place, we're now going to thread the catheter. And you can see that the wire is in place and I'm able to thread the catheter over the wire in the phantom without much difficulty. And that concludes our review and discussion of the Kyoto Kogaku Pick Phantom.